Hey, I'm Cade, and this is Cade Made, and in today's video I'm going to show you how I made these concrete garden spheres out of Portland cement and plastic play balls. They're just an accent for the garden, sort of a found object or something that reminds you of an architectural remnant. So let's dig in and get these made. So I use these plastic play balls, the ones that you find at the store, and I pump them a little bit fuller with air than how I got them so that they remained more taut because you're going to be putting heavier concrete on them so you don't want them to deform as you're doing it. This cement board tape has a little bit of adhesive in it, and I'll have everything linked down below as plus listed, including ratios on this, but you're going to want to wrap that plastic ball with the adhesive side towards the ball and make a thorough grid for the concrete to attach to. You want it to be almost completely covered. I mean, I completely covered this just for my own reference and see how it, you almost, I mean, the color's just barely showing through. So I'm using Portland cement. Cement is concrete without sand and other things, but we're gonna make a slurry first. So this is just some Portland cement. And then I'm using this concrete bonding adhesive. It's an acrylic adhesive that essentially turns your cement into a glue. It, it will attach itself on the fibers of your ball and then give something for the cement mixture to attach to once that's dry. So mix that thoroughly until it's like a wet, mushy mud, which almost holds form if you pressed your finger in it. I painted it on with a paintbrush, but you can use a chip brush, which would be more common. And then setting it on some sort of pot or something. This is a little too tall to begin with, but painting that on, getting a thick layer so you see none of the threads of the cement tape that we put on there. I do love to do things that are slow moving and easy like this. There we go. I grabbed an old terracotta saucer and continued forward. It just gets a little heavy, so you don't want anything that it's gonna tip off of. That would be a mess. So this is wet, and then this is dry the next day. It didn't have hardly any give whatsoever. It was really nice. So now I'm making our concrete mixture. I'm using sand. I'm basically using a one-to-one -one ratio with, in the end of it all, with my Portland cement and sand. Mixing the dry ingredients together and then adding the bonding adhesive, the polymer, and some water. And working that through both with the drill, getting that mixture right, adding a little bit more Portland cement, that's very important. You want it to be like a formable mud. So you're gonna wet the surface of your slurried play ball and then start patting on your concrete mixture. And you wanna keep it really wet wet the, the stuff that you've previously put on. You'll be making several batches for a ball this large, so mushing it together, making sure it's quite wet so that those areas combine together. And the bonding agent is actually adhesing to itself through the cement on both what was your slurry and now your concrete mixture. As I was doing this, I was anticipating putting another layer on there, but I was really enjoying the surface quality, um, the texture that I was making with my fingers as I was patting it and pushing it on it. So I decided to keep that, because I'm artsy. Tippy tippy tap tap to boop 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 boop. So I worked from the bottom to the top. I actually flipped it over at one point, decidedly what was the bottom, and now I'm finishing up the top, making sure that the surface is relatively even in terms of the sphere, but the texture can be whatever, because I'm doing it my way this time. Do you see how it has so much of a Play-Doh quality in there? And then that enables it to form together, keeping it wet all the way through. Just adding those final bits of texture. After that dried overnight, I'm making another slurry. Now this time I'm using the Portland cement and then I'll actually be adding some pigment. And this pigment is actually by Quickcrete. 
I bought both the terracotta and the brown, adding the terracotta first, and then probably a little bit of water, and then stirring that together. And again, we're creating a paste. Adding the brown, I wanted to dole down that terracotta, uh, terracotta, terracotta a little bit. Wetting that surface, again, very thoroughly. And then again, painting on that terracotta slurry that I made. Not anticipating that it's adding too much to the structure, but I wanted to add the color. In my mind, I was thinking that it was going to dull down quite a bit, but I'm not sure that it was going to. I, I find myself enjoying the process more than I was certain that a terracotta ball on my first try was the best decision to make. But then I just washed most of it off. I don't know. I got afraid. I thought it doesn't need to be that bright. But what it did leave was a little bit of this terracotta patina on it, which I am all for. Give me a patina of any. Ooh, there's a little bit more to go. Okay, for the second sphere, this is a smaller ball. It's probably a nine inch ball. I cut smaller pieces, but you notice that they have tips. Helps it lay down a little bit more smoothly so it doesn't lift. I made another slurry, this time just in a cup, mixing it together with that polymer acrylic and some of the Portland cement, and then again, painting it on the smaller sphere here. So this is kind of, it had a little bit of give to it, which was probably the indication of what was happening next. I did just draw a circle on there so I knew where to form my new cement mixture so that I could potentially take out the ball, which I did do in the end making sure that surface is really wet. But do you see how that's falling off right now? Look at the bottom there. See how it's lifting off of my, my ball, the new mixture? I was like, okay, I'm gonna save this. So I went to make another mixture and then that happened while I was doing that because I left the camera running. So then I was like, I'm gonna knock off what is falling off and then save it with my new mixture, so. So I just took off all of the batch of mixture that was too crumbly. It was either, it didn't have enough cement in it, it didn't have enough water, it didn't have enough polymer in it. And I just started rubbing the new mixture with what was remnant and wetting it thoroughly. And I added some sand too. I thought, well, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna add some sand. <laughs> and then I rubbed it in and just kept the form pretty tight. And yeah, well let that dry. And then I made a, made a new mixture the next morning. That beautiful Play-Doh mixture that we saw in the first one, smeared that on, got the surface nice and smooth, and then patted it on so that it was even and cylindrical all around. So here's the mixture. It's more of a one-to-one -one ratio of what I did. You know, two cups sand, two cups Portland cement, adding water in our polymer. Keeping it wet. Keep the surface of the sphere wet. That's the way to keep it on. I think that that's, that's really canon for these garden spheres. Wet. I didn't hold back. I made that as wet as possible. I think in the last topping for the entire thing, I did not add the polymer with the hopes that it may get moss on it someday because this is going in my pond garden, which I made this spring. Check out the video. and just finishing it by forming it so that it's as sphere cylindrical as possible. We're getting jazzy up in this. But it was wet, so the surface of my hand created that sort of orange peel texture that you can see there. And then I'm just basically forming the bottom of it. And this is them dry and in the garden see the terracotta kind of patinaed that one. 
and I really, really think it's perfect. It just adds a little interest to the garden. You can't add enough interest to the garden, and I said I wasn't done when I made this garden, and here I am today making more. I did make that small red one there. I did film it, but there's a better way of making a better sphere at that size. Well, thanks again for watching this video, and uh, please do thumbs up this video if you liked it, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more Cade Made videos. You can also catch me on Instagram at Cade Made DIY, and I'll be looking forward to catching you soon in another video very soon. Have a great day. Thank you so much.